What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we're gonna to take a look at some of the updates that Synthetics has to offer with the optimistic roll-ups. Um, before that, I wanna kindly invite you to subscribe if you have not already. Thank you to everybody who already has, I appreciate it. Um, please, uh, uh, you know, like, um, oh, also turn on the notifications. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, yeah, um, select all so you get all the notifications when they come up. And please leave a comment. Let me know what you think um, anytime throughout the video. If I ask any questions along the way, I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, maybe there's something you can teach me along the way too. I appreciate it. All right, let's get into it. Um, if you were unaware of what the optimistic um, layer two is uh we're gonna go over that uh, let me jump over to something here just a minute yeah right here we got um a whole playlist of stuff you can look at you got vitalik here talking about um optimistic rollups this is back in uh late february uh so almost a year ago so this has been something going on for a while uh apparently even uniswap is getting prepared to uh, run over onto, uh, or at least the Uniswap team, uh, with something called Unipig. And this is gonna be, you know, just like a lot of things that we, people have been talking about, layer two solutions, things like that for a long time. Uh, this is going to be uh, something to offer cheaper fees. Well, Synthetix uh, has already made the move to a certain degree, and we'll go over that here in just a second. So I'm going to read a few things. Uh, with the launch of Optimistum, Optimistic Ethereum, OE may yet in a few days, we're entering a new era for the project. OE, uh, pre sorry. OE presents an opportunity to scale the protocol, but it also presents a number of challenges. One of the most critical is how to gracefully transition from layer one, L1, to, pro to a protocol running both on L1 and L2, again, layer one, layer two, simultaneously. As discussed in a recent call, there remain uh, some unknowns. However, we believe we have a reasonable transition plan. It is not yet clear whether this plan needs to be included with the SIP, which is like a, a it's like a suggestion, um, uh, or each transition phase would be its own SIP. But we'll leave that discussion to the community. In addition, this post will call out some of the considerations that users should be aware of before transitioning to L2. With this change, uh, they're gonna maintain a balance risk between the L1 and maintaining a coherent system across both layers. This conflict is fundamentally incompatible, so they've opted for initiating the transition with the absolute minimum risk to L1, then adding functionality over the course of the next few months as they build confidence in OE. As a starting point, uh, you know, I'm saying uh, they think it's worth identifying the end state they're targeting. If uh, they can reach a consensus on this target, then the path between these two points can remain somewhat opaque while uh, they address specific issues as they arise. The two components that need to uh, be focused on are staking and exchanges. All right, because if you've been using uh, synthetics before, then you know. Uh, You've, you know about the Minter and where you can go and exchange uh, and play with the different synths, you know, like uh, synthetic Bitcoin, synthetic ETH, you know, and synthetic gold, and synthetic blah, 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 synthetic uh, indice, uh, indices, uh, all these kinds of things, all right? Uh, the most definitely need to maintain the exchange on layer one for the foreseeable future because that's got the most uh, dynamic aspects but should be able to migrate the staking to L2 though. Uh, it's significantly less complex to only support minting on a single network and that network, sh network should ideally be the one with the lowest cost to ensure high staking participation. So this leaves uh, us with the supporting exchanges, supporting exchanges on both L1 and L2, but transitioning all minting activity to L2. In order to support this, they will then need synth teleporters, okay? Coined by this person. Um, <clears throat> the Ethernet. 
The teleporters are contracts that allow for synths to be moved between the two layers. Uh, if they can achieve this, then they'll have a single protocol spanning two networks with transfers and, ex and exchanges of synths on both, but staking only on L2. Uh, it should be pointed out that the two potential alternatives, uh, the first is just a completely distinct parallel network on L2. This is low risk, but would fragment liquidity and introduce complexity for users as synths on both networks would be incompatible. So you'd need the L1 USD, L, sorry, SUSD, which is what you meant when you stake. So this right there. SUSD is what you meant when you stake SNX and also to burn the debt on the L1 and L2 SUSD to burn the debt on the OE. Crazy times, right? The second is to allow minting on either network indefinitely. This is a minor modification to the proposed configuration, but it introduces a compl uh, complexity in order to allow stakers who feel more comfortable on L1 to remain there and still participate in staking. So assuming they agree on the end stake, they uh, probably won't. Uh, they're gonna sketch out a transition plan starting from the mainnet deployment this week. So they got these different phases. Now, this is the phase that they're currently in, phase zero. I went and did this today and it was pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at that just a moment. So in the past, uh, this is the interface that if you had been staking SNX back from the early days uh, up until basically just recently, like this article was uh, beginning to state, this is where you came and you minted and you may have some coins in escrow. Now mine are not showing anymore because I'll explain in just a moment. Now they have, now this is no longer, I guess you can't really uh, stake in here. Uh, even if you came in, I don't know if it would allow it anymore, but um, so Mint will not be supported anymore and be depreciated soon. Okay, so soon. So maybe you can do this now, but it doesn't make much sense when they already want to push people over to this website, staking.synthetics.io. Um, you know, kind of a cooler looking interface too, but you can do the same thing right here where you can mint your SUSD, which is how you, know, you go and you, uh, you stake your SNX in order to do that. You need to meet the certain collateralization ratio in order to do it. If you don't understand that, go do your own research on that. There's plenty of videos and whatnot how to do that. Um, let's get back to this article or the article of phase zero. And the rest of these are just like the next stages. Um, the link to this article is down below. Uh, where are we? Okay. So they're making this one way bridge from L1 to L2, including escrowed SNX. Um, the SNX and SUSD, SUSD will be non-transferable on L2 for now. Minting of non-fungible uh, SUSD, claiming of SNX funded via the SDAO, which is what it always did. Um, so once the OE mainnet is live, a new SNX deposit contract will be, be deployed on the PDAO on L1. This will be the bridge that allows SNX holders on L1 to migrate over to L2. Warning, this will initially be a one-way process for escrowed SNX and there will likely be no way to get escrowed, escrowed SNX back to L1 for at least a few months. So just note that. Um, but it doesn't just go straight over. I'll explain that. I'll kind of talk about that in a minute. SNX sent to L2 will not be transferable, so you will not be able to um, even transfer your SNX to a different wallet on the L2 network. The migration process will also transfer any escrowed SNX associated with that wallet. Additionally, all debt must be paid before the migration can be initiated. That means if you have any current stakes um, and you owe anything on them right now, you need to burn off that debt so you can unstake, all right, and then move on. Now, that's not going to be a problem if your ratio is above the target, but if it's below the target, then, um, then you're gonna have to deal with that and, and pay off the debt by burning off some SUSD, whatever is required. The interface will let you know how much you need, um, and you'll know what I'm talking about because if you've done that before. Um, 
Uh, additionally, I'll debt. But, but, okay, in order, to, in order to reduce the impact for smaller SNX holders, we are also proposing that all addresses with less than a thousand SNX in escrow is instantly vested. Now, this was the most amazing part for me. So I want to remind anybody because, you know, I I did videos on this a while back. So if you were following any of my moves like a year ago or even a little bit over a year ago when I was staking uh, and earning rewards in SNX. Well, if you remember, anything that you um, anything that you staked when you were getting your rewards, the SNX rewards were put into escrow for one year. So uh, let's see here. Well, okay, now they don't show. Um, let me see if they would show here, uh, like history maybe. No. Yeah. Okay. So you can see how, like. You know, this was all the stuff that I was doing way back in April. The last actions were April of 2020. Um, my escrow amounts, no, it's not showing. So, okay, I did have total SNX vested. So this is how much my total rewards that I gained over that time, which is pretty awesome because you consider, uh, you know, I was doing this when SNX was all under a dollar. And, you know, if this is my rewards, that times the you know current SNX price. Well, it, shoot, it was right here on the home page. Where is it? Staking. No, where was it? Right here. That's the current you know SNX price. Um, I still think SNX has a huge way to go. Um, that you know it's going to do really well. Uh, you know, still against Ethereum, even where Ethereum's at. Um, so let's move on. This is to, so they're doing this to help kind of help migrate. And so what happened is, okay, so back over here again is I, uh, back to history. So because of all these, um, these last actions that I had before I ended my stake on April 20th, uh, of 2020, that I would have had to wait until April to actually get all of my um, escrowed stuff. But because of this migration and because my amount was, uh, where'd it go again? Um, I forget where it was, but we, oh yeah, here, right here. Because that amount was less than a thousand, I was able to pull it out all immediately. Now, I didn't go and move it to L2. Um, I want to wait to see how this goes. I personally, um, I'll, even though the rewards over here are up around like, you know, this is the like floating APY on this, the rewards do go still into a one year escrowed period, um, which, you know, I was fine with receiving it that way, but I, I, I prefer to take a like the half rate um, and get it immediately by staking with Celsius um, and basically letting my SNX be lent out so people can come and borrow it and come and you know potentially make double off of it okay uh, but I get my rewards weekly um, so that's yeah that's just what I'm doing but I'm gonna keep my eye on this um, especially the L2 because one of the things I didn't like was going and claiming with the Ethereum fees. And so now with this being uh, active on layer two, the fees should be a lot less. Um, sounds like it's gonna be similar to like operating on Tron or the, the Binance Smart Chain or anything like that. Um, so da, 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 you'll be able to stake your, um, SNX and Mint SUSD. However, you know, this SUSD will not be fungible with the SUSD on L1. So basically anything that you're doing up on this layer two, you're just gonna have to sit there and hold out until they get the rest built out. That's again why I'm waiting to keep an eye on things. But you know, it to me, this is a solid team. Um, even if there's a hiccup, they're gonna fix it. You know, they'll, they'll find a way to adjust you. Um, they've, they've been solid the whole way through, you know, and then these other phases you can come and read. This is, you know, again, like to provide, uh, exchanging of, uh, SUSD to other sync, 
uh, synths. They gotta, you know, get the chain link Oracle support onto the layer two. Um, you know, they're not sure, you know, how to do that yet, but that's what they'll be working on. They're developers. They've been doing this for, you know, a long time. They're a good team, you know, and so on and so forth. So, you know, by the end of all this, they want to like get the minting depreciated over on uh, phase four. They have a plan even for people who likely have lost their private keys or other issues like that, where it sounds like they're gonna have some sort of way for other people to pay off those debt positions in exchange uh, for some of the staked SNX um, that was there. Um, I don't know how they're gonna do that, but I'm sure they're, they, they basically wanna just get the old system to get emptied out so that everything can get moved over um, to layer two. So anyway, I, you know, I thought this was all really cool. Secondly, again, if you were following me last year um, and you may have some escrowed stuff right now, lucky for you, and just like it was for me, I only had to pay one gas fee, cost me about $10 um, in gas to uh, migrate my, or basically like get all my stuff released. And then I didn't migrate to L2 because there were like multiple steps. It wasn't all in one transaction. So, but they want people to clear out of that uh, as soon as possible. And uh, they allowed us to just save on those gas fees. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I'm not going and dumping them on the market. That is not my style. I like having these tokens, even at 15X, they were free at this point. Um, so I'm super grateful to the Synthetics team and I look forward to seeing what they have up next. Uh, they've been doing amazing things. So uh, let me know if uh, what you think about all this, because I, I do have, you know, even with these layer two solutions, I, I do have like one slight concern and that is that what's gonna happen to the actual main Ethereum network? Because I understand like every time, basically like, the Ethereum network will still be used, but it's not going to have as many transactions on it because it's like people are going to roll up their, like, you know, when they're doing these teleporters, basically moving assets from layer one to layer two. If they're like doing regular trading and stuff like that, they're probably going to keep things up in the layer two until it's time to actually take profit, which then you're gonna need to like drop it back to layer one in order to like, you know, sell it, you know, back to like real ETH on to like, you know, get your SNX, sell it into real ETH or SUSD into real ETH uh, and take that to whatever exchange to cash out, to pay for, you know, pay for life or whatever it is. But that's going to off, it seems like to me, it's going to just reduce the amount of transactions on the main Ethereum network, which to me causes somewhat of a long-term security issue with the miners, because if they're not incentivized to continue to mine, then are they going to start dropping off hash power? Um, then you have more opportunities for collusion amongst mining groups and things like that. So I don't know, let me know what you think. Uh, I'm interested in knowing, um, you know, this is all still experimentation and into internet money. So, all right, everybody, love you. Have a great one. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.